Hey everybody, this is Jackie Jean with Jean Photography and I am so excited to have you join me for my spring 2017 edit. So thank you for joining me and I'm excited to share these with you as these are some of my favorites taken from this past spring and I'll be showing you a lot of hand edits some, along with edits mixed in with some of my actions basically just showing you exactly how I edit my images and hopefully you can gain some new knowledge and be able to apply some of these techniques to your own images as well. Alright so this one is straight out of camera and I went ahead and I underexposed at least a stop. I tend to underexpose versus overexpose because with my skin tones I find that it's really easy to process and to maintain really nice skin tones when I underexpose a stop versus overexposing. Overexposing it it gets a little bit tricky and it's harder to recover good skin tones. Um, I do shoot in JPEG. I know it's a shock to some when they find out but I've been shooting in JPEG for a really really long time and um, it's just it works for me it may not work for you which is totally okay I tend to shoot in JPEG just because I am pretty consistent with my lighting not to say that there's sometimes I don't make mistakes but um, I am pretty consistent with it now just because I've been shooting for a good amount of time so yeah <laughs> so this is JPEG alright so before anything I I'm going to just kind of do a little bit of clone work. I tend to clean up my images before I actually edit them. So I'm going to go like, you know, we got a little bit of flyaways on her dress that I'm going to get rid of. So I'm going to use my healing tool. It's my spot healing brush and I love this brush. So I'm just going to brush over that and it disappears. Voila. Love it. It doesn't always work perfectly as you can see, but it does work pretty well. So when it doesn't work quite well, then I'll just use my clone tool. So I've got my clone tool. My opacity on my clone tool is 100%. I make sure that my hardness on my brush is set to 0%. I do that with all of my brushes because it makes it a little bit easier to blend things together. I'm on a Mac so I'm doing option and then clicking if you are on a PC it would be alt and then you click and there we go so I'm just kind of cleaning that up kind of different spots there alright so I'm going to come over here and I've got this one weed that kind of sticks out and it's kind of bothering me so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that as well change my brush size and you know cloning takes a little bit of practice but I tend to pull I try not to pull from just one spot so if you pull from one spot let's say I'm going to pull this one right here and you just kind of go over it it's going to create you know, it's going to pull it exactly the same. So then you can tell, if you look at it, where you've cloned. And you don't want to do that. You want to make it look like it hasn't been cloned. So I kind of pull from different spots. That way it kind of pieces together and creates another look instead of just duplicating it. Alright, so we've gotten rid of that. Let's see, I'll show you kind of before and after real quick. That's just cleaning up the dress and then taking that one weed, that one tall one out of there. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to drag and drop a sky. I went ahead and I pulled my sun rays out from my beautiful skies collection which this is in the skies bundle now. So I'm just going to take that, drag and drop. 
And one thing you want to do when you are adding a sky is you want to make sure that you're picking a sky that has the same kind of lighting. As you can see right here, this is a sunset and it's taken about the same time that I was I had taken this picture as well. So I'm going to just kind of bring that. I'm going to drag it slightly below the horizon line. I'm going to open up my layers and I'm going to go ahead and mask it. So masking basically you're you're creating this whole layer that you're not going to be messing with the actual pixels of the original image and when the box is white you're revealing the action of the mask or the effect of that current layer and when the layer box is black then it's covering and hiding that effect of that current layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to double click on this mask and invert it. If you are in CS2 through CS6 it's going to pull up this little box It's going to give you that option to invert. If you're in Creative Cloud then you're going to just it's going to pull up the whole side window and then invert will be down there on the bottom right side. So you'll, you're you still going to have that option. It's just going to look a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and invert that. And I'm going to grab my mask button and select my foreground color to be white. And I'm going to reveal the sky on parts of the image. So I'm going to have my opacity of my brush at 25%. I like to start on the lower side and then I'm just going to kind of paint paint it in there and I am brushing just kind of over her skin as you can see I am going to go back and fix that a little bit All right now I just kind of want to have a base of where I'm putting my sky alright Okay, another thing too that you want to remember when you are overlaying a sky is if you notice the sharpness of the clouds versus the bokeh and the creaminess and the blur of the background of the original image. So if you just place the sky on and it's and the clouds are sharp, it's not going to match your image as far as having those sharp clouds versus that creamy background. So you want to make sure that it's flowing nice, that it blends well. So what we're going to do is, I was on my mask, but now I'm just going to click on over to the actual sky. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. There we go and just kind of play with it and see which one looks the best. So I really do want to blur it out a good amount so I'm going to do about 30.3 click OK and then go back and then I can start masking in just a little bit more on the areas there. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do now is just kind of brush off her skin, make sure that that looks pretty well. I'm going to change my foreground color. Alright. And now I'm going to change my brush size and now just kind of work on blending it in a little bit more. So obviously when the sky, when the sun's kind of down too, it's a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to fade in that horizon line. That way it's kind of blending it in. It's looking a little bit more realistic there. All right, and I'm going to go to my overall opacity and change that to about 80. 
All right, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and make sure that not my mask is selected, but the uh, the um, sky, excuse me. And I'm going to just kind of warm it up a little bit because the horizon still is a little bit on the blue side, and I want to make it a little bit more golden. So I'm just going to do an image adjustment and color balance. I'm going to add some reds and yellow, kind of pair that together. There we go. So I've got plus 30 on the yellow and negative 41 on the red, and I'm just changing the midtones on it. I'm going to go to highlights and let me just increase the yellow about negative 5. Click OK, and here we go. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to merge my layers together. And now, now that I've got, you know, those little pieces, I've got those strays on the dress gone. I got that one weed and then I added the sky. So now I actually am going to continue editing. So this is basically the base and the start of my image now. All right, so with this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use levels. I know a lot of people are familiar with that, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to brighten up her skin a little bit, so I'm just going to go to the middle point. I'm in RGB right now. I'm going to just slide it over to the left. I'm going to grab my left point, slide it over to the right. That's adding some contrast. Just gonna keep doing that. I'm just eyeballing it right now. All right, there we go. So I've got my left point is at 35, and my middle point is at 1.74. All right, there are some spots that are a little bit clipped, and when I say clipped, it means I'm losing details in those blacks and I don't want to ever lose details. Whether I'm, you know, in the dress, you don't want to overexpose it too much where you're losing those details. And so I would say that um, your whites are blown. And so with this one, I'm going to say the blacks are clipped, so you can't see any of those details. And so we want to definitely mask those back in. Um, I still have my brush set at 25%. Kind of brush that off. Whoops. You can see there. A little bit in the grass. And I might actually do just a little bit more in the grass because I want to keep some of that richness in and really kind of make her stand out a little bit more. Do that on the sky. There we go. So I've got her brightened up. And we've got before and after. 